Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number one in the directory traversal module titled File Path Traversal Simple Case. All right, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course, and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in, so to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy, go down, select the learning path, go down again, select directory traversal, and then go down one last time to lab number one titled File Path Traversal Simple Case. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a file path traversal vulnerability in the display of product images. To solve the lab, retrieve the contents of the etc pass wd file. All right, so the target goal over here is to exploit the file path traversal vulnerability and retrieve the contents of this file. Okay, let's get started. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already getting intercepted in Burp. All right, so while the application is loading, notice over here it loads a bunch of images. And these images are likely taken from some kind of folder on the backend server that is hosting this application. And so this is your first indication that you should definitely be testing for path traversal vulnerabilities or local file inclusion vulnerabilities or even remote file inclusion vulnerabilities. And so the first thing that we're going to test for is path traversal. So let's send this to repeater. And then I'm going to move this right over here and hit send. Now over here, the response is a 200 OK response, and it displays the content of the image that is in this JPEG file, so the 65.jpg file. Now, if this is vulnerable to path traversal, we should be able to view the contents of other files on the server. However, something to keep in mind is that we're only able to view contents of uh, files that are readable by the privileges that this application is running as. And usually applications are not run with root privileges because that would be really bad. Um, that means we could read any file on the system, including sensitive files that could have hashed passwords. However, in most cases, it's only run with some kind of Damien user that has uh, very limited privileges. And so to test for path traversal, what we're going to do is we're going to try and access a world readable file. So it's accessible by anyone that has access to the server. And that file is going to be the passwd file. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to see if it accepts absolute paths. So we'll say etc and then passwd. Hit send. And it says no such file. Now, um, if it doesn't accept absolute paths, it starts with the folder that the JPEG image was in. That means we need to try and get out of the folder. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add dot 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 slash to try and get out of the directory that we're in. And I'll explain that in a bit. Let's put four just in case. Okay, so the reason I added the dot dot slash is because chances are the JPEG image is retrieved from a folder that is similar to this one. So var dub 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 slash images, and then we had the 65 dot JPEG image. Now, 
whenever I enter a file over here, so let's say the past WD file, it'll look for the past WD file in this directory. So var dub 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 images and then etc slash past wd which it does not exist in this directory this exists in the root directory so what we're going to do is instead of doing that we're going to add this comment over here so what that means is get out of the current directory which is the images directory and then add another one which says go to the parent directory which is the dub dub directory and then we're going to add another one and so it's going to say get out of the var directory and so it ends up with just the root directory and then the etc folder and then the past wd file and so essentially what you could do is instead of just assuming that it's three directories up you could add the dot dot slash characters as many times as you want to ensure that you actually get to the root directory so if we hit send right over here you could see it solves the exercise. It says, congratulations, you solved the exercise. And it dumps the content of the etc pass wd file. So um, again, I mentioned if you're not sure if, if it's three directories up, what you could do is just add a whole lot of other move up to the parent directory and it should still work because eventually it'll only get to the root directory and then it'll look for um, this specific path. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by manually exploiting the path traversal vulnerability. Now let's script it in Python. Okay, so this should be relatively simple because we don't need to authenticate to the application. This is essentially an unauthenticated vulnerability. And so the first thing that we're going to do is import the sys library and then the requests library, the URL lib3 library, and disable insecure request warning so url lib3 dot disable warnings url lib3 dot exceptions dot insecure request warning and then we're going to set our proxy setting just like we usually do in all of our scripts because we want all of the requests that are made by the script to get sent to the burp proxy so that in case the script doesn't work properly we could debug our script and see the request that it's making in burp and figure out what's going on so send all http traffic to where burp is running which is http 127 dot zero dot zero dot one and port 8080 and also send all https traffic where burp is running which is again http 127 dot zero dot zero dot one and port 8080 and then we're going to create our main method so if name is equal to equal to main then call the main method and we'll define the main method right over here okay so for the main method we're taking in a command line argument so we're going to say sys.argv and if we're we're going to say if it's not equal to two so if it's not equal to two command line arguments that means the program was run incorrectly so we're going to print the usage and the example instructions so usage instructions the name of the program which is taken from the command line and then the url and then we're also going to print the example instructions so example and again the name of the program and an example url so let's say www.example.com and again we take the name of the program from the command line arguments and we exit the program all right so we'll enter this if clause if the user does not run the program correctly if the user does run the program correctly what we're going to do is create a variable called url and set it to the second command line argument so sys.argv1 
And then we're going to print the statement saying that we're exploiting director the directory traversal. vulnerability. And to do that, we're going to call a function that we're going to create. So directory traversal exploit, and it's going to take in the URL parameter that we just passed in the command line. Okay, this looks good. Now let's define our function. So def directory traversal exploit, and again, it takes in the URL. The first thing that we're going to do is set the path uh, that contains the vulnerability. And so we're going to call it image URL because it is the path that retrieves the image. And that's going to be the regular URL plus this path right over here. So let's copy that. And we could add our exploit right over here. So we're going to say dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot and then slash dot dot slash and then we're going to say edc pass wd now this could be replaced with any file on the system that is world readable and again if the application is running with root privileges which is against security standard but if it is then you could um, attempt to obtain the shadow file which does contain hashed passwords okay this looks good and then the next thing to do is just perform our request, which we do using the request library. We say dot get because it is a get method right over here. And so it takes in the image URL that we just set. We're going to set verify to be equal to false because I don't want to verify TLS certificates and proxies to be equal to proxies. And then I want a way to verify that my exploit worked. And so to do that, I'm going to look for this specific string over here. This will always be there in uh, the response because the root user is always a user of the system. Okay, so I'm going to say if I see this specific string in the response of my request that I just made, then I'm going to print A statement saying the exploit was successful and then I'm going to print another statement saying the following is the content of the etc pass wd file and I'll just dump the response so that it dumps this right over here, which is the content of the file. Now it'll enter this if clause, if um, the exploit was successful, if it wasn't successful, then what we wanna do is enter an else clause and print exploit failed. And then we wanna exit the program because our exploit failed. All right, this looks good. Let's save it. So to recap, we've got our main method right over here. It takes in two command line arguments, the name of the program and the URL of the vulnerable application. And then it calls this function right over here. In this function, what it does is it essentially performs this request, which exploits the path traversal vulnerability and then dumps the content of the passwd file. Let's see if we have any mistakes in our scripts. So terminal, new terminal. And then we're going to say Python 3 directory traversal lab01 and the URL of the application, which might have timed out. And it did. So let's run it again. Let's copy that. Put it in here and remove the trailing slash and then hit enter. And here we go. It says, congratulations, you solved the lab. If we look at the content of the response, you could see it says it's exploiting the directory traversal vulnerability. And then it was able to successfully exploit it. And then it dumps the content of the passwd file.
All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually and then scripting it in Python. In the next lab, we'll look at another case of path traversal vulnerabilities. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.